realize to be Vansi Kunja. Actually, Krishna has inundated us in Vrindavan with so many holy, holy, holy spots with such an incredible energy and beauty as well, like Srila Puri Maharaj's uh, Gauji Mandir. What an energy, Vangsivat, Gopinath. When I'm saying that, I mean a little bit cozy, <clears throat> because I do have a great liking for nature's coziness. And some of these old architectures, these sandstone buildings, they have actually been able to maintain coziness in architecture, which is definitely rare, because you won't get coziness in a in a steel building, really. This is not, <laughs> is not, not possible. So, uh, we are... But here, here it, the feeling is preserved of being in Braj and At least it's my... Like when you see the little Krishna movie and you see the little temples in the natural, be beautiful, green environment, you know. <laughs> We imagine this Vrindavan like this, no? like Yamuna, forests, it offers some inside the forest a little Rajasthani style sandstone structure comes up, like in Vindakunda. If you have been to Vindakunda and you see this beautiful little carved temple out there in nowhere. <coughs> and this is a very, very a treasured vision, a treasured feeling, a treasure to be preserved. Like if we make an eco-yoga farm anywhere, we want to keep this spirit, we want to create that spirit. This, what is our imaginary Vindavan, Vindavan spirit? What is it like? Of course, you can never imagine Radha Krishna Leela in its fullest extent. but. You can imagine something, because last but not least, the scriptures have also been filled with descriptions of beauty. <coughs> the scriptures are, they, they dedicate lengthy parts to, for example, describing the, the flowers and the trees and the river and the, the natural life. No? Or, for example, in the autumn, the autumn described in the Shima Bhagavatam, uh, in, after the rainy season, uh, this is full of beauty, 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 and then in between of all the beauties comes the divine field soul, which is capturing the hearts of all. But it's in that setting. As a matter of fact, it's not so majestic. It's not so Aishwadic. Because when you hear Dwaraka, Dwaraka, but that's royal, you know, that's... <laughs> and you see the pictures like in our Krishna book or in Prabhupada's books, but, mm -hmm. no, Prabhupada has directed the art, so when there was Dwaraka, it was like palatial, huge, assembly halls filled with dignitaries and Krishna, wow. To tell you the truth, in my own meditation, mm. I have not gone deeply into Dwarakalila, what it feels like, how you move around there, the, the chariots coming in. <laughs> like once I saw a movie of Arjuna, I mean, that's very fictional, but the, the, the horse chariot race competition uh, in, the, in, in, that, in that realm. You know, my God, you know. This is very, uh, it's a different story. But last not least, the Pandavas, they came, they were chivalrous, chivalrous. They were trained by Dronacharya in Astra, in, in weapon management. So they were, there were great competitions for Drupadi, you know. That was very royal there. <laughs> Assembly.
Japanese princess. Can you imagine the dresses they had? Their dresses must have made Rancho's dress yesterday like a little joke, you know? When, when all these princes came in from all, all over to compete in the Swayamvar for a, for a princess. <laughs> so it's a totally different atmosphere. It's not Vindavan, you know. Vindavan is, is very play, playful and very cozy and sweet and Govardhan and cows and peacocks and children playing and enamored being and Kushum Sarovar, this beautiful lake, and Radharani picking flowers and encountering the gardener who is complaining about how do you dare to pick flowers here without permission? Oh, who you are? Who you think you are to tell me? Are you the owner of this? Uh, so it's a very funny exchange, as you know. Vindavan is very full of Jews, full of now, can we really, I mean, we have heard some stories which just make our mind, like this one story, just comes to my mind that Brother Rani is cooking. She's cooking for, for Krishna by the arrangement of Yashoda, because Yashoda knows in her cooking nobody will get sick. So... <coughs> She gets her cook, so finally say, she has been doing such a great work. She has been cooking so nicely. We should send some gifts to her. We should make a box full of gifts. So, so they actually arrange and put many things. And Krishna thinks that's a very good chance to go there to Java. So Krishna lies down in the box. And then Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu comes to pick up the box. He says, this box is very heavy. There must be lots of valuables inside there. And he brings the box and puts it right in Radharani's room. So, this, I mean, this is very, very uh, full, of, full of juice, of humor. And laughter and, and sometimes picking fun also on each other, you know, like like Madhu Mangal says to Krishna, if you don't give me another Madhu, I will not give you blessings to meet Radharani. You better give me all the Madhus you have. And then Krishna says, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the pastimes of Radha and Krishna and the Gopas and the Gopis and the Priyanama Shakas and all this. It's just filled with enchantment. And in the middle of this enchantment, in the very middle of it, is the Prima Bhakti, the highest sweetness of a loving relationship the very essence, the pinnacle, what we all have come for, what has been the gift for us. 